Hey, Kerma Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and I am just getting to Owatonna, Minnesota. Um, I am checking up on the Sikorsky S38. I've not seen it for at least three, if not four years. Coming to see Brent Langer. He's been working on it. And this road here that normally I come down from Minneapolis, it was like they're doing some traffic or something. I got routed by my GPS like I did the backcountry cornfield tour. Anyway, it was interesting. So we're coming up on the airport, here's the entrance. That's pretty cool. Bunch of T-38s. And uh, there's the Owatonna Airport. And we're going to go see the S-38, which we have not seen in forever. Uh, I just came from Oshkosh. Brent was going to join me, but uh, anyway, it didn't work out yet. He was working on another project. So I think this is the hangar where my airplane is. Let's go see what we've got. Also, I've got the registration I'm bringing for him, which um, he's probably going to need at some point. Um, you know, we didn't, uh, I shut the project down when the COVID scam demic hit and uh, basically shut down the project and spent money. Here we go. I see a zebra plane. What's happening? Oh my God, I haven't seen this in forever. What's going on? Good to see you, man. Hey, cutie, how you been? Good to see you. Good, 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 good. Oh my God, I'm going to give you this, which I got for the registration. Oh, okay. And uh, I just thought I'd bring it, so cool. Good, good. So what's been happening? Is that the one you take to Canada? Yep, that's your baby. Oh my God, that is <laughs> too cool. Is that a 172, 80? 185. A 185. What's there between a 180 and a 185? Uh, well, there's 182, but that would be a nose wheel airplane, of course. Oh, no, no, this yeah. We don't talk about those. <laughs> no, this, this airplane actually was Buzz's airplane. Oh, really? And uh, he bought it new in 73. And then uh, in 75, he took it to uh, a place called Eureka, almost kind of by the North Pole. Oh my God. Had an adventure with it. Huh. Headed over to Greenland a couple times up to find the Lost Squadron. Uh, oh that, my uh, God. He, he dug out of the ice. Oh yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah, Buzz was the guy who basically got these things going, and Brent was working with him and was unfortunately in the front of a Curtis Jenny that had an incident and uh brent made it buzz didn't and i ended up with the jenny so oh my god <laughs> ken's working on it yeah, yeah he's jamming he's away oh, yeah yeah my god well at least now do you still have the other hanger over there too yeah oh my god yeah. so i know it's been three years it's been four yeah. years I'd say at least three i don't remember exactly when it would have been oh my god four. Right, yeah. Okay, so I knew the wings were kind of in fabric process. Mm -hmm. yeah. This looks great. Oh my God. And we got the props, and they're, they'll sign them off as soon as we put them on. Okay, so we got one covered, one not, the booms. Booms are covered, uh, the vertical fins are in here finished, they're just safe in there. Easy huh. So, the, uh, are these all the tanks? Yeah, fuel tanks, oil tanks. Oh, be darn. God, those look nice. 
Those look really nice. We're doing some reinforcements and some improvements to them. They they had developed some leaks over the over the course of huh. ten years or so when they were in service. Are these? Yeah. So they're just straight. So just they're just sealed where the yeah pro seal rivets and stuff are. Mm -hmm. Oil tanks. Yeah. And those we had uh, took those to another welder and he beefed up the the welds on them. They were oh great. They were cracking up occasionally. Okay. Super. Oh my God. Well, the airplane had like almost a thousand hours on it. Uh, Tom Schrotty, you know, called me when I was over at Shuttleworth uh, flying an albatross with one of Peter Jackson's airplanes and guys. And uh, he, he said, Hey, Kermit, I'm over in Amsterdam and I'm thinking <laughs> of selling the airplane. He said, I said, Well, what are you asking for? Because I always wanted it because we were, you know. And he told me, and I said, Wow, well, yeah, okay. And he said, But for you, it'll be this price. The next day I was over with a contract. I signed the bill of sale, wired the money. Oh my God, I really pissed off my money market manager because I'm buying this airplane. So anyway, cool. So, so, so we've done nothing, I know, and I appreciate that. And oh my God, I at least have a bottle of Naked in Jamaica rum for you for three years of free hangar rent. Naked in Jamaica. I'm happy to, if you've got the time, to do something if you need it, but if not, I mean, I don't have the friggin' space, but, sure. but somebody at Oshkosh told me you were thinking of moving to another airport. Well, we actually started to uh, move my maintenance service from here to Wasika, which is about 15 miles west of here. Okay. And uh, so we still own these two hangars, and nothing's going to change there. But okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So yeah. How, how about as far as you know, finishing anything or that kind of stuff? Can you still do it here? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I was just yeah. you know, I just because if it was. If you needed to move it or whatever, you know, then I'd start throwing some more money at it. But it's really, like I said, I don't need the airplane, but I'm happy to put money into it if you've got the time to. Sure. To, yeah. uh, we could start doing a little bit on it. Yeah, now, okay. Um, just to kind of get it nudged along a little bit. But we uh, spent a lot of time moving the, sh moving the majority of the shop over to Wasika this winter. That occupied a lot okay. of time. Huh. So took over the um, FBO airport manager position over there. No way. Yeah. Oh my God, what do you think? Is that where all this gray hair came from? <laughs> I'm starting to notice some back there, Brent. And, and other things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love, love the way he camouflages himself with a gray t shirt, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh my God. It's the uniform. Man, that fabric looks awesome up there. Cool. Yeah, and I think, as I remember, there was some, some metal up there people could walk to fuel it, and that was getting kind of cracked and dinged, and that was something that needed to get fixed. And Yeah, we repaired a lot of ribs and some skin repairs. And the engines were, you know, they were 900 hours, something like that, and it was, you know, getting close to that. And Anyway, so what happened was um, when I did the deal with Tom, then we had, uh, uh, you know, Brent went over with Paul, met yeah. you over in Amsterdam, first time you guys ever met. They took the airplane apart and put it in two containers. Believe it or not, they got this in two 40-foot containers, shipped it back to here, and away they've been. Just FYI, Paul's last day was last Friday. Oh, really? Oh, yeah? Yeah, not this last Friday. He, <laughs> you know, he, he graduated from Embry-Riddle. He's, I think he's been with me like 35 years. And, uh, you know, he's done some great work. And uh, he got a job offer, like, to go back and teach at Embry-Riddle, you know, his alma mater, which is pretty cool. So he's going to make more money. He's going to be in the air conditioning. And uh, <laughs> he's going to be teaching a bunch of kids, paying it forward. Uh, and we'll, we'll see if he gets bored, how fast <laughs> he gets bored. But anyway, so that's cool. So yeah, Brent and Paul took it apart. We got a video online on that. Yeah, that was an adventure in itself too. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was. That was two weeks. A lot of a lot of time spent packing it up in those two containers. I was wondering how it would look when it got here, and it was like when we opened perfect. the doors, it was just like as if we had just closed them. Oh my God. They did a really good job of handling it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, good. So. Uh, yeah, so just point out things that need to be done. I mean, is there still wiring and carbs and... Yeah, so the, well, the carburetors have been overhauled and everything. Okay. With the, went with the engines. Um, now, are they so, carburetors like that have diaphragms and stuff that may go bad after a while, or are they like float no, carburetors? They're float carburetors. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah, those are good to go. Um, 
as far as the engine cowlings, we were going to just kind of clean them up and repaint them. Right. Put some new paint on everything. Um, the actual engine mount stuff, that's all complete. Um, the, the wiring to both engines is all coiled up on that center pedestal. Right. And I think a lot of that's probably going to wind up going away because I'd say about half of that wiring is to do with the engine monitor that Tom had me put in when he flew it over the Arctic or over the... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. So I don't know that you'd want to have that stuff in no. the plane. So we... I'm not going to fly it across. It's been once. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> so, so if we remove move that stuff and put some of the original gauges back in there, that'll get rid of a lot of that wiring. Yeah, cool. So, so yeah. And then, uh, of course, the props were overhauled and uh, yep. we're ready to go on and just have to borrow the special tools to, to get them snapped back on there. And uh, we were in the process of putting the fabric on the, on the outer wing panels, kind of when we, sh when we shut her down for a while there. So... And we'd actually have the blanket sewed up for the second wing. Mm -hmm. uh, we come up with a pretty neat system for that. We glued it, actually glued the seam like a French folded felt mm -hmm. seam, and then double stitched it through the glue hmm. and everything. One of the tricks that I learned from some of the old guys. Yeah, good, good, good. Which I don't know if, if you were aware of it or not, but uh, Gary Underland, he passed away so last fall. The name's familiar, but I'm trying to. Yeah, he was the. Uh, I would call him basically a project leader on these building these airplanes. Oh, I'll so be darned. He was, he was Buzz's uh, main mechanic. Oh, for years. and w was that the guy that I met that I bought all the plans from? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. wow. That was scary. Yep. Oh. Yep. Huh. He was hey. in, a, in assisted living for a while and then oh. didn't make it. See, so yeah, I think uh, of the whole crew that built these airplanes, I believe I'm about the only, I think I'm the only one left. Oh living. my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so We're next. Yeah. <laughs> Better hurry up and get this thing We're done. We're right? next. Oh my God. Well, this thing is such, and you know, I don't know if you knew it or not, but in part of the design of Fantasy of Flight with the S39, the plan is I'm going to do an attraction element that includes the airplanes, and it's pretty much about Martin and Osa, but it's kind of like titled The Hero, and then in parentheses, uh, Inn's journey. So it's for the heroes and the heroines about the journey, but it really focuses on Osa. So we'll uh, make her uh, special, perpetuate her uh, legacy. So all the, as I remember, there was some things in the landing gear needed to be tweaked and, yep, yep. you know. We took care of that. that There's a couple of holes I was going to add on the interior to be able to get in there and service the, uh -huh. the points a little bit and inspect them better because uh, that was kind of a problem area on, on the plane over the years that it was in hmm. service. So. Well, that's pretty cool. In case you bump into a crocodile or a hippo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This thing is so cool. Oh, my God. It's so much bigger than the S-39. Did, have I taken you up in the S-39? Nope. You, okay, you're coming down to sign up on this year, right? <laughs> Every other year? Yeah, kind of. Okay, you come down. Come on down. We'll, t we'll go up in the S-39. Have you been in this? Oh my God! <laughs> Come on, girl. Too cool. Too Can you remember cool. when um, uh, Shradi had it at Oshkosh, uh, probably back in about 2010, and it laid down on the runway? Did well, you what, well, just one. It went down on one side, right? Yeah. One yeah. Of the, one of the valves was locked. Oh my God! And it just slowly laid down its side a little oh bit. Oh my God! <laughs> I. Uh, I remember he had it parked at like the Hilton Garden in there one time. It was sitting out there, and man, I'll, I think the first time I saw this it was at Reno because he kind of based it out of, yeah. you know, that area there. And he was up there, and I think he entered it in that Smithsonian vintage thing or whatever they do. But uh, I flew it actually with uh, Waldo Anderson. We flew it from uh, North Las Vegas to Reno one time. Oh, cool! And I put it on display at the air races. Yeah. Yeah. Too cool. Anyway, I've been through this thing before, but uh, anyway, that's how you still get in, just like the S30. Now, oh, why not? S39. Just take a quick peek. So there's the vertical fin. This is too cool. Of course, they had them set up if they were doing a lot of flying and stuff with uh, passengers. You know, you could put, what, probably six back here? Five. Yeah. No, but I mean, if if it was like a Pan Am one or something. Uh, I believe you could maybe get as many as ten in those. Oh my God, ten plus the two up front, or? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, and these guys actually 
open this thing up and they fly and they take pictures out of here. I mean, is that cool or what? And you know, I was always concerned with the S39. I thought, well, you know, I know they do this with this, but I never wanted to do that. And for one day I forgot to close the thing and I took off. <laughs> And it was up there, and I thought, okay, well, now I know I can do that. But the difference is, this one here is between the props, and the other one is right right in the prop wash because it's only got one engine. God, that fabric looks awesome up there. Cool. So the so the tanks still drop in from the from the top. Yep, there's the aluminum lids that, that cover them. We have those all painted. We'll have back there. That we came up with, too. Two cool too cool pretty good not bad for an old man <laughs> eaa and i turned 70 years old this year yeah. how old are you 48 oh my god <laughs> oh my gosh that's not fair anyway oh my god this thing is so cool brent oh my god that is so cool Yeah, all part of my big dream. It's gonna happen. I just don't know when. <laughs> so everything's here. There's really nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So refresh my memory. Obviously, the wings bolt on. How much more rigging and floats and where are the floats? I have those stored in the other hangar. Okay. Right yeah. I just go take a peek. Um, so yeah, you got the, the lower wing, of course, that bolts on right there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where are the lower wings? They're uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I just go take a quick so, peek at those. So those are only, oh, I would say they're about 20 feet long or so. And then you got, of course, Let the me between the wings. And then the <laughs> and everything. So, yeah, then there's, of course, the booms that go back, the verticals, the horizontal, the rudders. All, there's a bunch of stuff there. You know, I was hoping because the booms and the wing basically came from the Mance airplane, Paul Mance airplane. Mm -hmm. God, if there is any way I could find a way to get that damn number, mm -hmm. um, and because I'd love to be able to hop rides in this at Fantasy of Flight. Hey, just FYI, you remember when uh, they had the little museum over there, yeah. and they had the S56? Yep. I ended up with the one that was in, a, in an auction that was part of, uh, I think, the New York police, and they were chasing bootleggers or something with it. And it got taken off the registry, and it took me four years to get it in my name as the original airplane. But I just got it done about two months ago, so. I think the one that Buzz had. Ended up in the Reynolds, yeah, yeah. yeah. the tobacco so museum. If they fly it or if it's just on static display. I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's the, uh, the, the one in, where is it? Where's the other one? The, the uh, the Sam Johnson one. Oh, that's in Racine. Wisconsin. Racine, yeah, yeah. Racine. Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that one's hanging from a ceiling over there. I don't know if you've ever seen um, that. No, I mean, I've seen the airplane when it flew at Oshkosh, but I never. Mm -hmm. God, whatever happened to that guy that did the movie? He used to. Tugan, Tugan Rosalini, I don't know. I haven't yeah. heard from him. Oh, my long. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was a, he, he was an interesting guy. All right. Yeah, yeah. And then, and all of those drawings and stuff, you still have all those here, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, okay. Yep, okay. We got a, a big crate actually at our farm of all Sikorsky tooling and spare parts and cool. stuff. That, that you and, you, and you also told me you still had like the radiator and yep. something radiator else? and the propeller for the Jenny. Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. They were, they were, I mean, they were probably the two pieces in that project that were the most of the most value so we wanted to keep them safe yeah super put them in that moving truck when we came down with yeah all that awesome good 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 let's go check out the uh the other stuff turn the lights on too cool that was the jenny oh my god yeah so and you just got some new floats didn't you for the 185, yeah. Yep, yep, okay, those, cool. Uh, put those on there a few years ago. These are actually the original floats that were re refurbishing for a guy. But so, so, these are, so do these really need anything, or mostly just cleaned up and recovered? Yeah, okay. Because the other ones, I mean, pretty much got drilled apart. Yeah. Because they were being walked on and everything. So these yeah. just need to be cleaned up. Yeah. And yeah, this was all when we did that airplane. This was all new construction. Right. Uh, the outer wing panels, the center section of of the airplane were original. So right. A lot. 
of years on those. So, and a lot of cracked ribs and things were repaired. And so, so yeah, these are more of a clean up and recover job. There's a, a couple add-ons I would do to the lower wings to stiffen huh. them up because there's actually this is meant to be the actually walkway out here. Yeah. And uh, so that got kind of bubbly over. How, how, how did this happen? Uh, the, the, I'm guessing it was probably the finish was cracked and then the glue from the fabric work probably attacked it a little bit. Okay, it cool. And then when we peeled the fabric, yeah. off, that'll get repainted. And, th and as I recall, we, the last time we did this, it was all chromate and green. Uh, actually, it was, uh, it's like a epoxy red. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and that's actually an original original color, like those uh, cool. wings when we got them uncovered from original. They were Super. that color. Good. And then the tip floats are up on top. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. Awesome. Too cool. Oh, my God. Well, I'm kind of inspired. Pretty cool. Dang, oh, my God. Let me guys get a look at this thing some more. God dang, that thing is cool. That thing is so cool. Let me take a selfie for my Facebook post.